I'd like to tell you about two little girls who are best friends, Sylvie and June. And one morning they were playing in the schoolyard, waiting for schools to start, when a group of children circled around Sylvie and started chanting that her running shoes were geeky and babyish. And that only stopped when school started. But it didn't stop for June. She felt so hurt and humiliated for her friend that it was only when the recess bell rang that she went over to Sylvie and she said, may I wear one of your running shoes? And that powerful, empathic action taught every single child in that playground that if you hurt my friend, you hurt me. So there are many Sylvies out there, but in 85% of the bullying situations, there are children like June who are onlookers and bystanders. And it's not that they don't feel anything, but they don't know what to do. So in Roots of Empathy, we work with these children and we help them develop empathy. And why is empathy important? It's basically the ultimate human trait. It's the ability to understand the other. And in Roots of Empathy programs, children work with a tiny baby to understand the humanity in that little baby, the vulnerability of that little baby, and see how they can find the humanity in themselves and then the humanity in one another. Empathy really is a connective tissue to our shared humanity. Here's a dad and a baby, and Roots of Empathy works on the principle that the attachment relationship is where empathy grows. Empathy is innate in babies, but it's through this loving foundational relationship that it either flourishes or fades. So the father, in this case, you can see the loving relationship he has with his baby. This baby can't walk or talk, but this baby can communicate with great volume. Here you have a typical question that you would see in schools, and I'm an old school mom from way back when, and I have great respect for the teachers of the nation. And in schools, we ask this kind of question. If Johnny had three apples and Amelia took two, well, you can guess, you know, but the real question in Roots of Empathy is different. How Johnny feels is going to decide anything and everything that Johnny learns that day. Because if Johnny is sad, sick, or lonely, if Johnny is feeling anxious, Johnny's not learning much of anything that day. So schools have a responsibility to ask children and to measure what children know. But in Roots of Empathy, we support and work in tandem with classroom teachers. And the questions we ask are more about what do you think? And what do you feel? And what are your dreams? They really get to the emotional life of the child. And it's not enough just to teach their minds. We have to teach their hearts. And this whole idea of social-emotional learning really needs to have a safe pocket in schools. Now, this is a short um, film I'm going to show you in a minute, just to let you see how it plays out. The Roots of Empathy program is really all about the relationship, the attachment relationship of a baby and a parent. And the baby, I'll show you now the size of the baby. This is our baby. This is the tiny teacher that comes into the classroom. But it's all about the engagement of the children in the lives of that little baby and the parent. So you'll see joyful engagement. And engagement is a big problem for us in schools because it's really tricky to engage children's minds and hearts when you have an armada of broken hearts in every classroom and emotional shrapnel flying around, and poor teachers can't do everything. I often say the closet isn't big enough to fit all the hats that teachers wear these days. So let's have a look at 
what Roots of Empathy looks like. How are you? How are you? Well, little baby May wins their hearts, but she also wins their minds. And I don't know if you noticed there that at one point, baby May, when she was saying goodbye to the children, she started bowing. And baby May um, has Japanese heritage, and her mother had explained to the children that she often bows to baby May. And baby May, in turn, bowed to the children. So this whole idea of the intergenerational transmission of violence and poor parenting that happens as a result when you don't have empathy, this is a, a way to break that cycle. In my early work with families who struggled with abuse, uh, whether it was domestic violence or child abuse and neglect, it horrified me to realize the generational impact of that and that Really, the only way, the common denominator in all of that was the absence of empathy. And how could we do something, really through the universality of school systems, to try and break those cycles for children? So there's an emotional literacy that's taught in the Roots of Empathy program from the baby. And the trouble with empathy, it can't be taught in traditional ways like we do in schools, because it's experiential. It's not really taught, it's caught. So through baby May and the attachment relationship, the children are finding the humanity in her. They're finding all the, the things that baby May does. She can't speak, but she clearly communicates. And the Roots of Empathy instructor is guiding the children's observations to see what is it that baby May is feeling? Is she frustrated? How does her mom, in this case, help her? Do you saw when she fell down and crashed on her chin? Immediately she turns to her mom. Am I really hurt? Should I be crying or is this okay? So that whole safe base exploration, the idea that you learn about life through how you're loved so that the children can lay down tracks in their brains that might replace a relationship, an attachment relationship which wasn't so well attuned for them. There was one young boy who I met in a grade eight class and his name was Darren. It was a tragic story. When he was but four years old, his mother was murdered in front of his eyes. And he was in a series of uh, foster care situations, more homes than he could count on two hands. And the one day in the Roots of Empathy program, the uh, mother was explaining that her baby really, we talk about temperament, her baby really didn't like to be cuddled that much, liked to go in the snuggly and look out at the world. And then the bell went, and these big kids in grade eight were putting on their backpacks and getting ready to leave. And the mother said, would anybody like to try on the snuggly? And uh, didn't our friend, who had shaved his head, save for a ponytail in the top, and he had a tattoo at the back of his head, didn't he say he would like to try on the snuggly? And then he was offered the baby. And he put that baby in chest to chest. And that wise little baby snuggled into him. And then he went off to the corner and he started rocking. You know that seasick rock that parents sometimes do? He had seen it. He was holding the baby and rocking. He was only there about a few minutes. And he came back to the Roots of Empathy instructor. And as he carefully gave the baby back to the mom, he said, 
Do you think that if no one has ever loved you, you could still be a good father? So I don't think we have ever the right to give up on any child. And in this concept of empathy, we know that Darren developed empathy and had a chance to see himself in another way. Well, in this last millennium, we've witnessed a man walking on the moon. Let's hope that in this current century, we will be able to see people walking in one another's shoes like June and Sylvie. Let us hope that this generational sectarian violence, which allows us because of our differences to carve one another off and marginalize one another, let's hope that we will learn through emotional literacy that we really are the one because we share the same feelings. Our continents and oceans may divide us, but we share the same feelings. And that little baby and that loving relationship is the power that will allow us to change the world. We've harnessed the power of the sun, the wind, and water, but we've just begun to harness the power of children and empathy to change the world child by child. Thank you.